Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome to Alto Gafool. The Porsche Macan is now four years old. Launched in 2014, it's been one of Porsche's most successful vehicles. Based on Audi's Q5 platform, but very heavily modified, a lot of people might say it's time for revision. Well, that's exactly what we've come to Stuttgart to take a look at. The full model rework over won't take place until 2020. So I think we've got a little bit of room for some updates before then. Let's take a look and see what Porsche have done. We've already told you that not a huge amount has changed aesthetically on the design of the new Macan. And to be honest, there's a certain truth to the old saying that if it isn't broken, don't try and fix it. But don't let that convince you that not anything has happened. There are some very subtle and very important changes to the aesthetic here. This would be one of the most noticeable over at the front. We now have LED lights coming as standard right throughout the Macan line, whichever one you order. You can, however, go a little bit up in terms of taste and price, these ones are cornering LEDs. Well, why not? Slightly further down, we've got somewhat larger air intakes on the side of the car, making it just look that bit more aggressive, that bit more punchy on the road. And given that it is a small SUV, I like that styling. Coming around to the profile of the car, it's still four meters 69 or 15 foot four in length, so nothing changed there. But we do have brand new bespoke wheels for this car. They're available in either 20 or 21 inch, which is the same as the previous car, but they are specially styled for the new release. Four brand new colors are also available with the Macan. Now we know this one, this is the Miami blue, and you may remember that from the Boxster. Coming around to the rear, this is where the most significant styling changes have taken place. Look at this, a really nice, impressive LED lighting strip that runs the entire width of the car. And that has a very big visual effect, not least because it helps reduce the height slightly and make it look less SUV-like and more sporty at the back. Interesting to note is that whereas with the KN, this is a flush panel right across the back, covering up the lights, with this, They've wanted to keep the angularity present so there is no cover here and you really do get those nice sculptural aspects to that line. Coming slightly further down, tell me, does anybody recognize this from an iPhone 10? Looks a little bit familiar, doesn't it? Well, the previous model had a similar effect, but whereas that looked very much chiseled out in the section here, this is nice flowing continuity right across the back. So the back now presents as being cleaner, simpler, more designed, I think that's my taste. Coming down, we have this nice, big, but still discreet air diffuser. And you have to like these, don't you? Four black exhaust ports. Nothing there just for show, only for working. At Altogafool, as you can imagine, we see more than a few different types of boot design. And it's always one of the most fun things to do to make somebody open a boot when they don't know the trick to that particular one. So I'm wondering how many of our Altogafool viewers actually know how to open the boot on a McCann if they haven't done it before. A couple, a few? Well, I have to admit, I am one of those who didn't. So I'm grateful to Thomas for pointing this out to me. Watch closely. I think you could spend a fair amount of time driving yourself quite nuts looking for that if you didn't know where it was. So again, thank you, Thomas. Now we have actually a pretty spacious boot back here. There's nothing radically different from its predecessor, but, and we can hear some fans running there, that's just providing power to the stationary car at the moment. We have ample room back here. Obviously this car is best suited to traveling around with four or five passengers, but as you can see from the rear, we have plenty of space back here for anything that they're going to necessitate driving around with. Let's take a look inside and see what's changed. Wow, well, there we go. I'm happy to say that although the changes here have also been discreet 
Again, why change something if it isn't broken? They are significant and they do really serve to reinforce the quality of the vehicle. Let's have a sit in and see how it looks. Well, as you'd expect, that really is very comfortable and everything about the car immediately says, drive me. Now, the first thing of note is this. This is our friend, the GTS steering wheel. Obviously, it doesn't come as standard, but we do know this from the 911. It's an absolute joy to use this steering wheel. It's very, very comfortable. All of the controls are exactly where you want them to be, and it really emphasizes the feeling of power and control. If I get Thomas just to sweep back around at the door again, I think this is an excellent demonstration of the style that's carried through throughout the car. It's very conservative, nice and minimalistic, but it just really works. There's a great mix of materials here, from the stitched leather, shh, don't tell Thomas, to the finely grained aluminium trim. It's all very conservative, but very stylish. Now, if I get Thomas to come around the other side so we can take a closer look at the cockpit, then we'll have a look and see how that adds to the experience. Well, we've all heard the adage that less is more. Well, Porsche have heard that adage, but decided to ignore it. I have seen less controls on a spaceship that I'm looking at right here. Now, on the upside to that, whatever it is you want to adjust while you're in this car, there is going to be a button for it. But I think it's fair to say that it will take you a fair amount of time to learn to navigate this while you're in the process of driving. All of this is meant to augment the brand new infotainment system, which we can see, we look a little further up, comes with an 11 inch screen, but that's very tastefully fitted into the dash so it doesn't pop out and irritate you as you look at it. Everything about this car is designed to say quality to you. The finish of the materials is excellent. In fairness, that's exactly what you'd expect. But coming back to those controls, look at this. I don't think I've ever seen so many controls just on a central console above a rear view mirror. That really is quite something. But then I think if you're the kind of person who wants to own a Porsche, you're also the kind of person who wants to know that it's your car, it's set up exactly the way you like it, and anybody else coming into the cockpit understands. Oof, this is obviously your place to be. And that's certainly somewhere that I like to be as well. Personally, I really appreciate the mix between the analog and digital that Porsche have gone for now. In an era of full digital dashboards, clearly they could just have gone for that design feature, but what they've decided is more in keeping with what their drivers would like. We have analog, analog, and digital over here. And that suits me really nicely. I like those analog dials, particularly when I'm driving something with a bit of get up and go in it. It just tells me exactly what's going on and doesn't make me feel that I'm being too nannied by the system. That mix of old and new is also reflected up here where we have a digital clock, an analog clock, and of course, an analog lap timer, because you know, you're gonna want that in your car. The finish of the dash, again, resonates with quality. It's really nicely put together. It's very conservative. It's very easy to enjoy as you sit here. And we have more of those brushed aluminum panels right throughout the dashboard, just echoing that design on the doors. So how does the driver's experience of this car feel? Well, I don't think I'm gonna come as a big shock to you to tell you that these seats are ridiculously comfortable. They are really, really well designed. Now, I'm one meter 78 or five foot 10 in height. I do have a long torso. As you can see, I have plenty of headspace here and we have a full panoramic roof that always eats at least an inch away from head height. Well, that's all important information to know if I tell you why it is I find these seats so comfortable. Thomas is gonna take a little cutaway shot in a bit, which I hope he'll insert here, that show you the range of controls that are available for these seats. If you thought that center console was somewhat overwhelming in its choice and variety, wait till you see how many things you can adjust on this seat. Now, obviously, when you drive the car from fresh, that can be a little frustrating because it's not perfectly set up for you, but it's so nice to have over time because you can make sure that it fits you perfectly. And of course, it has a memory function, so if somebody else comes into your car, you can still get it back just the way you like it. One of the things that's changed with this new massive display is that we've had to redesign the dashboard slightly, and that means that these two air conditioning heating ports have moved from the side of the display to below it. I'm particularly pleased to see that this hasn't changed the flow of the dashboard. These don't look obtrusive down here, and they also are going to work just as well. They are clear of your knees, so you will still be able to get that heating and cooling exactly where you want it to be. 
Now, if we come slightly further down to this jungle of buttons, we will find this button right here, which is to help us control the assistance systems. And I'm very pleased to be able to tell you that we now have emergency city brake added to the ACC with traffic assist. Why is that great? Well, previously it had been left off the McCann because the argument ran that a lot of Porsche drivers are purists and they don't want something interfering with their driving style. Obviously emergency city braking is the car making a choice, not you. But it is a very important safety feature. And it's one of those things that you'll never appreciate that you have until you realize that you have it. So I think it's a natural addition and I'm happy to see that it's now available. Because of that huge range of flexibility that the seat adjustments give us, it does mean that whatever your preferred driving style is, you're going to be able to find a nice spot for that. I personally like to be quite low down within the vehicle. It makes me feel that I'm right where the center of gravity is and it enhances my feeling of the driving experience. So within this vehicle, within this seat configuration, I'm very nicely set visually. My look at the road ahead is really unobscured and it's very nice. I like the tapering off of the bonnet. It's done in just the right way that I can get a very immediate sense of where the front of the car is without obscuring any of my on-road vision. Now, on top of that, I'm very pleased to say that my visibility on the side is excellent. Although we have this really quite large B pillar, it doesn't prevent me from being able to see back through the passenger's rear window. And I really do like that because it's always nice to know what's coming at you while you're driving down the autobahn at speed. Let's take a look in the rear. Okay, so here's an opportunity for some of our more eagle-eyed viewers. Porsche tell me nothing has changed back here. Why? Well, they had such good feedback from their customers about the experience of being a rear seat passenger. There just generally wasn't any need to change anything. But I'm interested to know if any of our keener eye viewers can spot anything that has changed, because you never know, there could be a couple of Easter eggs back here. Maybe we can find them together. Well, as with its predecessor, you wouldn't have expected significant difference. Clearly, you're never going to be particularly happy about the headroom with this design, but come on, it is a compact SUV. I do have a long torso, so for a smaller person, it really wouldn't be a consideration at all. The seats are very comfortable. We have lots of amenities to make us feel good as we're on our way, including two charge points available down here, heated rear seats, and your own heating and cooling controls for the rear seat passengers. Also, a nice, fairly unpretentious bit of back seat storage, and the same conservative styling on the doors that we like so much from the front. We've been joined by Ben Weinberger, and he's a spokesperson for Porsche. Ben, my first question to you. It's a very popular car. What were you trying to achieve with the redesign? I mean, it still has to look like a Macan, of course. We didn't want to change everything, but we wanted to um, bring in some new details that represent the actual Porsche design DNA, sort of the, the brand identity. And therefore, uh, this new Macan got these uh, really nice new taillight in the back that we already know from uh, the new Panamera and the new Cayenne. Now I understand an awful lot has happened with this car technically to improve and enhance the way it drives. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean it will get new generation of six cylinder uh, engines. So with a lot of more power than, than before, and you will feel that, of course. Also, some changes happened to the, to the um, suspension. A little bit stiff, a little bit more sporty. Still has the uh, mixed tires. Uh, not very typical for an SUV, but typical for Porsche, sports car. Ben, thank you so much for taking the time to show us around. I think we need to have a slightly closer look. What do you think? So let's have a chat about what's going to be powering this. Well, unfortunately, because this is such an early preview, we can't give you specific numbers that are definitely accurate. A perfect example of that is the questionable availability of diesel. Porsche say they're going to be making a decision on that in the next few days. So at the moment, they think it's quite likely there will be a diesel within the lineup, but there isn't definitely going to be a diesel within the lineup. So we'll have to wait to find out more about that later on. Meanwhile, don't worry, there's plenty to keep us occupied. We've got three standard engines that come with this car. 
Base model will be the 2-litre four-cylinder producing 245 horsepower. One up from that will be the 3-litre V6 producing 354 horsepower. And the top of the line will be a 2.9-litre turbocharged V6 producing 440 horsepower. And if you want to know how all of that power is going to arrive at your wheels, it will be a seven-speed PDK or Porsche double clutch. That about does it from us from our very brief look at the brand new Porsche Macan. What do we think? Well, it's a little bit frustrating for us because as you will have noticed, the aesthetic changes are minimal to say the least. Where Porsche have put most of their time and effort is on redesigning the drive. Previous owners of the Macan will tell you it's really a great car to drive, but what Porsche wanted with the redesign was to bring more emotion into the mix. So we have new engines, a little bit more power, better control, uprated suspension, and more driver assistance systems. That all is going to add up to an improved drive, and we're very excited to be able to bring you that. What is it all going to cost you? Well, as you can imagine at this stage, Porsche are more than a little cagey about the pricing, but they will tell us that it's only going to be slightly more expensive than the predecessor. What are you going to get for that? Well, if you like the Macan, it's going to be a newer, refreshed, slightly reimagined version of the previous one. I personally really like the new styling cues. They're subtle, they're stylish, but they definitely add something to the design that it needs to feel that bit more contemporary. The interior experience is every much as comfortable as the predecessor, and if the drive's improved as well, well, I can't wait to give it a go.